Forget Kung Fu Pandas and their silly gymnastics, Duskhaven's monk goes back to the roots of the concept and bases its style on the Scarlet Crusade monk, a tough as nails zealot with fists of fire and stone. In this basic guide, you'll learn more about Duskhaven's monk, a new specialization priests can choose at level 10. I'll tackle the following topics. General information about the spec, spells, rotation, talents and glyphs, races, how to gear your monk, and finally their strengths and weaknesses. Let's start with some general information. A monk priest is technically a melee DPS and can even tank depending on which stance they activate. You've got teachings of the monastery DPS, which gives you access to new monk abilities, increases your damage by 5%, attack and movement speed by 10%, and your attacks deal additional holy damage. You can dual wield weapons, but you are unable to use most priest spells except buffs, resurrection, fate, and your cleanses including Mass Dispel. If you activate Teachings of the Monastery Tank, you also get 5% more attack and movement speed, 30% more health, 60% more armor, 6% less chance to be critically hit, 110% more threat, and an increase in parry rating. Overall damage is also reduced by 9%. The same restrictions on spells apply, Although as a tank, you can actually still use Renew as well. Not sure if that's intended or an oversight. Oh, and your power word shield is 30% stronger. As a monk on Duskhaven, the entire concept revolves around Chi, a stacking buff which is generated by certain spells. It also puts a pretty neat glowing room underneath your character. Upon reaching 3 stacks, you attain Serenity, which causes Holy Splash damage and increases your damage by 5% and heals you every 3 seconds for 12 seconds. Some abilities generate chi, some require you to have it, and some consume it. A monk's core kit of spells consists of Piercing Jab. This is your basic spammable ability, although it has a 2 second cooldown. It deals 180% weapon damage, reduces an enemy's armor by 3%, and increases the damage it takes by 2%. These effects stack up to 3 times. It also generates 1 stack of chi, leaves a 4 second dot, and heals the monk for the same amount. Yes, those are a lot of side effects tied into one ability. Trash Kick is your melee cleave ability, which has an 8 second cooldown. It generates a stack of chi, hits all enemies in front of you for 130% weapon damage, and slows them by 25% for 8 seconds. It also increases their damage taken by 2%, stacking up to 3 times. Technically, chi can only be generated once every 2 seconds, but if you trash kick a few mobs, it sometimes immediately gets you 3 stacks and triggers Serenity, adding to your burst. Firestorm Kick is a 20 second cooldown spell, which makes you spin around for 2 seconds, hitting all nearby enemies for fire damage, and increasing the fire damage they take by 5% for 15 seconds. You can channel this while moving, and it requires 1 chi to be used, but it does not consume it. Burning Fists is an ability which buffs you for 10 seconds, lighting your fists ablaze and causing melee attacks to deal extra fire damage to all enemies in a 5 yard radius. It has a 45 second cooldown, and it also requires 1 chi to be used, but it doesn't consume it. Fist of the Tiger is your hardest hitting ability. You attack all enemies in front of you twice for holy damage, and it cannot be dodged, blocked or parried. It restores 30% of your mana, and it also gives you a 20% attack speed buff for 12 seconds. It's on a 30 second cooldown, and it consumes all stacks of chi, but the damage isn't influenced by whether you had 1 or 2 stacks. Some pretty interesting abilities there, and we'll look at how they weave together shortly. Apart from your main damaging skills, a monk gets access to several cooldowns or other situational abilities. Fists of Stone somewhat surprisingly turns your fists into stone for 20 seconds on a 1.5 minute cooldown. It increases your damage by 15%, parry rating by 10%, and your attacks can break the bones of your target, reducing its chance to block, dodge, or parry by 5%. However, it reduces your movement speed by 50% for the duration, and it consumes all stacks of chi. Fortifying Resolve is one of your defensive cooldowns, increasing your health by 15%, and reducing the damage you take by 20% for 15 seconds. It's on a 2 minute cooldown. Leg Sweep is pretty much the same as it is on Retail. It's a 30 second cooldown ability, which knocks down all nearby enemies for 2 seconds, but it also deals increased weapon damage here, so you can use it as a damaging skill too, if everything else is on cooldown. 
Provoke is your basic taunt on a 30 yard range. Ring of Peace puts down a sigil on the floor which silences all nearby enemies for 5 seconds on a 1.25 minute cooldown. Tiger Rush increases your movement speed by 70% for 6 seconds. A basic sprint with a low cooldown of 45 seconds. Zen Meditation is a channeled ability which restores 25% of your mana over 6 seconds and reduces your damage taken by 10% for 15 seconds. You can only use this out of combat. Scarlet Bond is a passive ability which makes your Piercing Jab, Trash Kick and Fist of the Tiger increase your movement speed by 5% for 15 seconds, stacking up to 4, basically giving you a 20% movement speed at all times in combat. Okay, let's see how the abilities weave together and what a monk's playstyle actually looks like. Keep in mind that this is a basic guide and I'm still a novice at the class, so don't take this as expert advice, but it's honestly not that complicated. At its core, all you have to do is manage your stacks of chi and your cooldowns well. For single target, you'll want to start with a piercing jab and, if it hit and gave you a stack of chi, then put up burning fists and do a firestorm kick. These do not consume your chi. Now would be a good time to pop all your damage increasing cooldowns including fists of stone, which does consume your chi. Do another piercing jab and then a fist of the tiger, followed by another piercing jab and then probably a trash kick. Keep building and releasing your chi using your two main abilities and keep an eye on your cooldowns. Use Burning Fists, Firestorm Kick and Fist of the Tiger whenever they're off cooldown, preferably in that order. Keep in mind that Fist of the Tiger consumes your chi, so you don't want to do it when you've got two stacks. It's a waste of potential serenity damage. For multiple opponents, the rotation is very much the same, but with more of an emphasis on Trash Kick and Leg Sweep. You can do a lot of strong cleave bursts as a monk. If you use Burning Fists, Firestorm Kick and Fist of the Tiger on a bunch of targets, odds are you'll pull aggro off the tank and put out some impressive numbers, especially if you pop your many cooldowns. If you are doing higher level content, it's important not to neglect your huge potential as a supporting class. Put Power Word Shield on your team whenever it's needed, and keep in mind that you can still dispel magic and diseases in monk stands. Oh, and if you're in between ability cooldowns, pop a shield on yourself. It increases your haste by 10% for a few seconds. As a tank, your rotation is also similar, although you'll have to weave in your defensives as well, such as Fortifying Resolve, Glory of the Monastery and Pain Suppression. Because you are still pretty squishy as a monk, it's important to always keep up Inner Fire and Power Word Shield and cycle through your damage reduction abilities as needed. A monk is just a priest who activates the teachings of the monastery, which means that you can technically pick whatever talent tree you want. You can be a shadow monk or a holy monk, but honestly the discipline tree is what you want to be specking into because it gets you talents such as Scarlet Will. Power Infusion also increases melee haste by 15%. Inner Focus makes the next Fist of Tiger give you 10% increased critical strike damage for 20 seconds. And your shields always grant you a lesser version of Pain Suppression, reducing all damage by 10%. Really, really good talent. Pain Suppression is of course a great cooldown to have as a tank. Even as a DPS, you'll be able to save wipes by putting it on your tank at the right moment. Power Infusion, which is a great cooldown to put on yourself, or one of your casters if you're feeling generous. Improved Firestorm Kick gives you another Burning Fist type effect for 6 seconds after using Firestorm Kick. Much stronger Power Word Shields due to Rapture, Improved Power Word Shield, Soul Warding, Reflective Shield, Renewed Hope and Borrowed Time. Your inner fire is much stronger too, and especially the increased charges are very useful. As a final talent, you can get Glory of the Monastery, a 3 minute cooldown which increases your damage and health by 15% for 12 seconds. Apart from those, you also get more stamina because of improved power word fortitude. Renewed Hope gives your entire raid a 3% damage reduction for 1 minute, and Enlightenment just flat out increases your dodge by 2% and haste by 4%. Yes, you can mess around with the other talent trees, but if you want to be a good monk, you'll spec into discipline. Here's a sample build which I'm currently using. As for glyphs, there aren't any monk specific glyphs so far, so the options are pretty limited. The only ones which I think are useful are glyph of power word shield and pain suppression. On retail, there's also a glyph of inner fire, but on Duskhaven that one doesn't exist anymore and is just baked into the improved inner fire talent. As for minor glyphs, I would suggest Levitate and Shadow Protection or Fortitude. Which class would be best for Monk? Well, Duskhaven is cross-faction, so regardless of which faction you choose, you can play with your friends. 
you want to be a monk, you've got plenty of options. Human, dwarf, night elf, draenei, undead, troll, or blood elf. All of them have strong advantages, but because Duskhaven is currently mainly a PvE server, I would say undead isn't as great as it usually is, although Will of the Forsaken still has some niche uses in PvE. Likewise for humans, every man for himself is still strong, but not as great as it would be if PvP were bigger. If you want to tank on your monk, I would say Dwarf's Stone Form or a Night Elf's Extra Dodge is probably the way to go, although the Blood Elf AoE Silence cannot be underestimated. For dealing damage, a Troll's Berserking is really strong if you add it on top of all your other cooldowns, and Draenei adding 1% hit is always great. I personally went for the Hidden Race of Worgen. You can become one by selecting Human and then going through the custom questline in Gilneas. You lose your human ratios, but gain the following. Altered form. A 2 minute cooldown, 5% damage and healing increase, which also transforms you into a worgen for the duration. Dark flight. A permanent 5% movement and swim speed increase. Running wild. You can transform into a worgen and run at mount speed. Thirst for blood. Increases your damage by 2% for 10 seconds and heals you for 2% health when you kill a target which gives experience or honor. Stacks twice. Not the best racials, but they're pretty fun and they suit the monk pretty well in my opinion. But honestly, the difference between races is negligible, so just play whatever the hell you want. Regarding gear, as a monk you basically just want to gear like a shadow priest, using the strongest staff you can find and going for as much spell power as possible, because this boosts your damage the most, way more than melee crit or anything else. You're technically a melee spec, but should gear as a caster. Get hit capped, which I think is around 8%, then maximize your spell power. As a tank, go for hit, stamina, and spell power, with most of your gear being the same as for DPS, but necks, rings, and trinkets can, should, be real tank stuff, focusing on dodge, stamina, parry, and so on. You can dual wield as a tank, because you'll deal faster and thus more AoE fire damage with burning fists, increasing your threat. It's also an option to use one spell power weapon and one more tanky weapon in your offhand, but honestly, I think using the slowest staff with the most spell power you can find, and stamina when you're tanking, is probably the way to go, due to the nature of how a monk works. White damage simply isn't that consequential to the overall picture, it's the fire magic damage you put out that brings in the majority of your damage. Take a look at the following screenshot, which shows the damage spread of a typical rotation for about 4 minutes on a target dummy, with a sustained, self-buffed, single target DPS of around 850. Melee damage only accounts for 5% of your damage. The burning blow hits from burning fists is next at around 6.4%. Your strongest hitting ability, Fists of the Tiger, does around 15% of your damage. Not sure why it's split up here. Flame Whirl is the damage from Firestorm Kick at a decent 10%. Then we have Eye of the Tiger dot, which is basically piercing jabs dot. So if we combine them, we get over 24% of our single target damage coming from piercing jab. Passive damage ability Serenity is 14%, which is really neat as you don't have to do anything specific for it. Topping the list is Flame Strike at 18.5%, and it took me a while to figure out what the hell this actually was. I assumed it was Firestorm Kick, but that was accounted for already. Flame Strike comes from the 2 set bonus of the Demon Fang set. Firestorm Kick causes affected targets to burn for additional damage over time. And as you can tell, it really adds up. With that in mind, we can see how Firestorm Kick actually is responsible for 28.5% of your damage, a spell which has a 20 second cooldown. And it gets stronger the more spell power you have, so from this it follows that you should A. Get as much spell power as you can after hit capping, and B. Get the 2 set Demon Fang as soon as possible. Now, one final note here. This example was based on single target damage, so piercing jab actually looks stronger than it usually is in most scenarios. If you're doing a dungeon and clearing packs of mobs at the same time, your fire damage spells and fist of the tiger start to pull ahead massively. Here's a screenshot of my damage over the course of two mythic plus dungeons, and the fire damage is responsible for nearly 55% of my damage, followed by fist of the tiger at 18% and serenity at 7.6%. Melee damage and piercing jab are barely 10% of your damage, so it's pretty clear that as a monk, you are just a caster who's in melee range. Focus on gearing for spell power and pick a strong staff, 
or I guess a strong one-handed slow mace and a good offhand if they're better than whatever staff you can get. To end the video, let's go over a monk's strength and weaknesses. A Duskhaven monk is really solid at cleave and AoE damage, and it can pull off solid numbers. However, it is pretty weak at single target sustained damage. Self buffed and at my current way below this level, I'm sitting at around 830 850 DPS, which is low compared to melee hunters and dead knights, for example. If you are DPSing as a monk, forget topping the damage meters on a single boss. You'll most likely be bottom of the barrel, but if you look at overall damage of the entire raid, when there are larger trash packs and boss fights with cleave and adds, you can certainly shine. As a monk tank, you feel pretty frail honestly, maybe it's the dress. Having to renew inner fire is a hassle, and it's running out during a stun or a moment of large boss damage can be very dangerous. You do have plenty of cooldowns, so if you're skilled and geared, you can definitely pull off monk tanking at higher levels. But honestly, it feels like you're having to try way harder than a warrior, paladin or even a shaman tank has to. That being said, a monk is very useful to have in any scenario, in my opinion. You have plenty of group and raid support, such as the spells, buffs and shields on the party. You can help mitigate a lot of damage, and using pain suppression on the tank can save your group from wiping. If your tank does die, you can just swap to your tank stance, pop your defensives and allow the group to recover. For solo play, the monk is awesome. You've got plenty of tools which make you very durable, so you can solo a lot of content, such as the Brawler's Guild, level 55 plus dungeons, and the Trials of Scenarios, one of the few specs which can clear all four trials, as far as I know. In summation, Duskhaven's monk is really, really fun to play. It's a great support class, and I must say the developer has done a great job creating this new spec. Give it a go if you haven't already. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. If you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel and leaving a comment below. See you in the next video.